Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to another feature content update video. This week we're talking about a massive update to the ShipStation integration. And when I say massive, we spent a ton of time adding a bunch of automated functionality into the ShipStation integration that I hope will help lead to greater revenue gains for folks and add yet another way for you to continue operating without having to have direct uh, contact with people uh, during this pandemic. So to get things started, head to the App Center and scroll down to the ShipStation app card. And if you're already using ShipStation, you're immediately going to see there's a lot of new options. But if you're new to ShipStation, definitely check them out. There's a link in the app card to go sign up. They have a free trial. Uh, they set you up with a stamps.com account as well so that you can do things like USPS shipping and that kind of thing. Go check them out. Uh, really cool stuff. They partner with basically every shipping integrator you can think of. Anyway, that's enough about them. Let's talk about what we did. Uh, what we've done is since the initial release, we've added in the ability for you to actually pull in your shipping carriers choose uh, the different types of services they provide and you can now have your clients select the type of shipping and if they want something sent back to them you can actually directly charge your customer through repair shopper without having to go and manually calculate it all it will automatically look up the cost with the carrier based on the customer's address and then add that as a line item to an invoice and bill your client and you can also do things like add it to the custom widget so that when they request services, they can select they'd like to have their, sh their product shipped back to them. And when they send it in to you, you can then uh, charge them again directly. The shipping costs, we added in a percentage markup so that you can account for variability in the shipping costs as those tend to change from day to day. And yeah, enough talk. Let's talk about some of these options. So. Uh, you'll notice there's some tabs now, and of course you can turn it on and off. One of the really cool things about the ShipStation integration is you can automate some of the flows. Uh, the big one being you can have it automatically post a tracking number and send a ticket comment email directly to your client so that they know when the product shipped. You don't have to have a technician remember to do that and forget and have that whole situation happen. Just have it all done automatically and you can set that up here. Uh, you can also have a, a order created in ShipStation when an invoice is marked as paid, which again, that way you don't have to have someone go in and remember to add a, ship, a shipment to the ShipStation or send it up to ShipStation. It's all done automatically. And this is especially handy, let's say if your clients are paying you through the portal. Well, let's say it's like 10 o'clock at night and you're out, you know, watching a movie or something. Ironic, I know. It's during the pandemic. But anyway, let's say you're not working. Your client pays you at like 10 o'clock at night. Well, if they do that and you have that option enabled, the whole thing is totally automatic. So when you come in the next morning, the not only is the invoice paid, which is great, but the order's created in ShipStation, and all you need to do is go into ShipStation, check a box, and purchase the label, and the system will then circle back around and automatically create the ticket comment and let them know it's been shipped saves a bunch of time it's really cool uh, and then there's also an option here to allow customers to change shipping methods in the portal and i'll show you that here in just a second uh, we've also added in ticket automations to this so that when an invoice is created from the ticket you can have the tickets status automatically change to a status if you're choosing if you click here, you can choose from any of your statuses as well. Something we saw people doing when they were using the ship station is they were having to go manually change the ticket status. Now you don't have to do that. Another really cool thing is when a shipping label is printed, you can also set this to change the ticket status. We saw a lot of people had a couple different statuses when they were using ship station. They were having to manually go and change these. So usually what we would see is when a ticket has the work completed they would maybe wait to resolve the ticket and choose like pending shipping or something like that and then when 
the invoice was paid, they would then go back and resolve the ticket so that it was completely closed out. Or they'd have a special ticket status like resolve-shipped. That way it registers in the system the ticket's done, but then it, the status also reflects that it's been shipped. Well, that can all be automated now, and you just got to choose the statuses you want. And if you don't want that, then hey, you don't have to do that. Uh, earlier, I mentioned percentage markup, and we've added a field here so that I have it set at 10%, but what you can do is tell the system that no matter what the calculated price is through ShipStation for the shipping, you want to add, in, in my case, an extra 10% on top of that. And that's because sometimes there's shipping cost fluctuations that can happen between the time when you purchase the label and when it happens. Some of you also want to recoup your costs for shipping. Well, this is a way you can have the system automatically do it without you having to remember to add an additional line item to compensate for the cost and all that stuff. Or maybe another really good example is you want to cover the price of the boxes. I'd say that's a pretty regular thing just to recoup the, the cost of your material for shipping. This is how you can do that. On to the next tab, shipping methods. This is the tab where you can pull in all of the carriers that you're hooked up to through your ShipStation integration. Now, you do need to go into ShipStation before you come here and set these up and tell ShipStation who you want to send uh, send your, your products out through. So USPS, FedEx, UPS, if it's a major carrier, chances are ShipStation works with them. And I'll, once you have that set up over there, you come into the app card, and if you've already turned the integration on, just hit resync your data. Uh, or if you want to add more down the line, hit resync data after you've added them on the ShipStation side, click the button, and they'll all be listed here. And all you need to do then is select one, and it'll pop up. You can also choose to make some shipping options free. We've seen people offer like uh, media, ma media mail through USPS or like a very, like, air quote, slow shipping method free because it's such a low cost. Um, you can choose to make sure that something is always set as free and the system doesn't charge free, charge your client if you want it. The next tab is shipping boxes. Now, a lot of you we've seen use the carrier provided boxes and that's usually because you get a discount on the boxes or in the case of USPS, they're straight up free. Uh, and it's just convenient. Uh, so you can actually do that. ShipStation will look at the carriers and the boxes they offer, and you can select to use those boxes. Uh, just make sure that you're selecting the boxes that are appropriate for the services. We don't have a validation for that or anything like that. But yeah, just, just be careful there. There's also an option for a custom package. If you're a fan of Uline and you order boxes from them, I've ordered my fair share of Uline boxes over the years, you can actually uh, set up a custom size package if maybe you're shipping iPhones and you have a special packaging to secure an iPhone. You can use those boxes and add the dimensions here and then when the shipping's calculated, it's based off of this custom box versus something else. You can choose to make one of these your default and you can have quite a few of these as well if you have different things you like to ship or different services you offer as well. So uh, on to comment and email template tab. This one's pretty easy. This is the template that gets applied to your ticket when the system automatically updates it using a ticket comment. We've added two new tags here, shipping method and tracking number, and we provided the definitions here. And they're also in the KB I'm, I'm gonna have ready when this releases. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Anytime ShipStation updates your ticket, it'll use whatever is listed here. Um, yeah, so what else do you need to think about? Well, I mentioned the custom widgets, so let's take a look at that really quick. If you head to Admin, Integrations, Custom Widget, um, I'm just going to choose a new one here. We have added a shipping section to the Issue Detail option. So in this case, I'm going to hit Settings. And there's a new selection here called show shipping option. And when you check that, a shipping method, package type, and weight will ungray and allow you to select one from here. And the purpose being is we most often see a lot of custom widgets being built for one specific type of service. Um, so right now you can only select, let's say a default shipping method here. 
that can be changed later. So if for some reason you have multiple options and someone, the customer wants to change it or you want to change it later, you can change it after the fact. That's not a big deal at all. But uh, one thing I, uh, again, just wanted to point out, shipping option, uh, turn that on, choose a method, a package, and a wait, hit save. Uh, one thing you definitely want to include alongside this if you're getting new clients through this custom widget as well is the customer detail. Uh, and especially require the address. Uh, again, the shipping calculation is all based on the address, so you want to make sure they're entering their address in correctly. Otherwise, you're going to need to remember to go get that. So once that's all set up and you have it up on your website uh, and someone sends a lead in, the lead will come in with the shipping info and it will be displayed in this section. In this case, this is a manual lead. So. Uh, if there was shipping info here, it would say manage shipping. Otherwise, just click add shipping. You can then choose what you want. The cost automatically gets calculated. You hit done. Adds the shipping amount here. And you can create the ticket. Quick note, uh, if you have automatic ticket conversion set up and the lead information, or excuse me, and the shipping information on your custom widget, all of that will be automatically calculated and shifted over to the ticket. Once you're on a ticket, the shipping information is located in this section and you can click manage again and change it should you want to. Uh, at this point, uh, the shipping is also, if you have the customer portal option uh, turned on, will show in the customer portal. So the customer could change it at this point if you wanted to. but. Let's just say for the sake of it, it's all good and we're working the ticket and I'm ready to send it to an invoice. So at this point, you hit make invoice. The shipping information will then migrate from the ticket to the invoice along with all of the charges like your labor and your parts and all that stuff. And you can continue to manage it from here should you want to. You could even choose to delete it. You'll then find on the invoice, the shipping item is added as a line item uh, on the invoice detail itself. And just a quick note, I referenced this in the KB as well. When you choose shipping options on the app card, it will automatically create products for each shipping option in the background. No setup or anything you need to worry about. I just wanted to maybe point it out. Uh, it's at this point, uh, and this is just an example I'm gonna bring over here. A client could log into their customer portal and they will see a new shipping section on the invoice and they could click this button and it would allow you to change or allow them, excuse me, to change the, the shipping and it would auto calculate and automatically update the invoice or swap out the shipping type. If I didn't want to use FedEx ground and I wanted two day, it would all of that's done automatically. You don't have to worry about updating anything. And then the client can just go ahead and pay uh, with a credit card. Um, there's also a, option on the payment screen before the credit card is actually captured to change it one last time as well. One of the neat things about that is that means that the template tag that is in many of your emails for people that quickly pay you currently will automatically still display the appropriate information if you have the shipping integration turned on. Uh, so let's get that out of the way here. And let's take a payment on this invoice here. Skip signature, continue. All right, we're on a paid invoice and I had the setting to automatically send it over to ShipStation so it's already gone ahead and done that. Let's jump over to ShipStation, refresh my screen here. And there it is, already created it. And I don't think Troy would appreciate it if I charged his credit card. So I'm not gonna actually go through with purchasing the label, but I wanted to at least show everyone how fast it was. The other really cool thing that I mentioned previously before is you can actually generate labels for a bunch of things at once, process them in bulk, and the automations will take care of the rest from there. At that point, you just gotta have whoever's shipping your stuff, make sure it's all packed and ready to go, and um, the automation does the rest. Uh, it's at that point that once the label's created, it will update your ticket, customer knows that it's on its way back to them. They have the tracking number. And if you're still with me, that's the ShipStation integration. We covered a lot of ground here. 
the knowledge base goes pretty in depth. I, I tried to add as much detail as I could and it's kind of an evolving document as well. We're gonna be adding a lot more to it. Um, but yeah, I appreciate everyone's time. I hope everyone gives the shipping, the, the shipping integration a really close look. This is a valuable tool for a lot of repair businesses, even those that are not computer repair businesses to continue to make revenue during a pandemic, ensure the health of your team by not having direct contact with, with folks necessarily. Also, it opens up a revenue stream that you may not necessarily uh, had access to previously. Most repair businesses generally only have customers within their region or their zip code or the adjacent to zip codes. Now, if you have this on your website, you potentially broaden your revenue stream quite a bit because you could take you know, repairs in from outside your, your city, your state. Um, it's pretty cool stuff. Anyway, I appreciate everyone's time. I'll see you in the next.